Hi there. So this video is going to show upgrading to the newly released RC version of Unraid 6.8.0 RC1. After which, we're going to have a look around and see what's new. Sounds interesting? Then let's get started. So it's here, it's out. 6.8.0. Unraid has jumped up a dot number. It was 6.7 and now it's 6.8. So because it's 0.8, it means it's a pretty big release. So that means more features, functions and bells and whistles. And we're going to be taking a look at them. But hold your horses, wait. Remember this isn't a stable release, but it's an RC release. And you may be wondering, well just what's the difference? Well, a stable release has nothing to do with horses, and is a release that is basically tested and considered safe to use, as all major bugs and issues have been fixed, and a computer or server running it should be stable, hence the name Stable Release. Now, an RC release is a release that hasn't had as much testing and fixing as a stable release, so issues may be found if you use it. But hey, that's what RC releases are for. Now the RC stands for Release Candidate, and it's a step on the way to a stable release version. Now it's not like RC versions haven't had any testing at all. Now the developers will have tested them on all the hardware that they have, but there are many many different types of hardware out there, and many different use cases, where errors sometimes don't become apparent until the software's being used. Now there's many people out there who say that they would never run an RC version, they'll only stick with the stable versions. And for people that are running real mission critical systems that can't go wrong, then yes I'd agree with that. But people running the RC version and reporting bugs, they're giving back to the community and helping the development along. If no one did it, then releases would be far far slower. So yeah, using a stable version will generally get you a smoother ride. But if you run the latest RC versions, the ride may not be as smooth, but the reward is the latest features and functions. So whether you want to use an RC version or not, weigh up what's important to you and then choose accordingly. So that's enough talk. Let's get on and upgrade the server to 6.8.0. Okay, so the server here that I'm going to upgrade is running the latest stable version, which is 6.7.2. And so the first thing that I'm going to do before I do the upgrade is I'm going to make a backup of my flash drive how it is now. Okay, so with the flash drive backed up, now I'm going to update my plugins. So I'm going to click onto the plugins tab and click check for updates. And as you can see here, there's a whole bunch of updates available for my plugin. So I'm going to update all of them now. Now you often find when a new version of Unraid comes out, that various plugins have been updated and adjusted so they're compatible with that new version so i think it's always worth upgrading your plugins before making an upgrade with your unraid system okay so that's the plugins all upgraded so now i'm going to do exactly the same for the docker containers you can see here there's quite a lot of updates available i'm just going to double check and click check for updates again okay and so with the updates checked i'm going to hit update all and update all of my containers Okay, so that's all of the containers updated now. Okay, so now we can upgrade the Unraid system. But there's one extra thing that you can actually make a backup of. If you've got the CA Backup Restore App Data plugin in, then you could make a backup of your App Data folder before upgrading, but that's not really necessary. Okay, so to upgrade from the Unraid version that you're on, we go across to Tools and click on to Update OS. And here in the top right hand corner there's a button check for updates, we want to click that. And to go onto the RC version we have to click from stable onto next. Now we can see that 6.8.0 RC1 is available, so let's click onto install. And now here's the first kind of new thing that we can see about Unraid 6.8, is that it's downloading the new system into RAM but then extracting it straight onto the flash drive. In previous versions this wasn't the case. So let's click on to done and it says that a reboot's required so let's go onto the main tab and reboot the server. 
Wow, and look at that. If you've got a password set for your server, you'll be greeted with a new login screen. Now, it's much nicer looking than the old login screen, which was like this. But this new login screen isn't only about looks. Because it's now forms based, it allows us to use a password manager with it, such as LastPass, Dashlane, or my favourite, because we can self host it, Bitwarden. Oh, yeah, a video is coming soon for self hosting Bitwarden, so look out for that. Okay, so before we go looking through the new features and what this new 6.8 version brings us, let's go back to Tools and back to Update OS. And once you've upgraded, should you find you don't want to stay on this version and go back to the earlier version that you were on before, you just have to click this button here, Restore. Okay, so with that said, let's go back across to the main tab. And at first glances, this looks pretty much exactly the same. But there's one very small change on this main tab that you may not notice unless you look very closely. You can see here next to each of the disks that this little round dot tells us that this disk is running normally and the device is active. But what we can actually do is we can spin down the device by clicking on the round ball. Now, if we head across to my other server, my backup server, and looking across at the old version on the left hand side, we can see here that it's very slightly different to the new version. Going over the round ball, we just see that it's normal operation and the disk is active. But if we want to spin down the device, in earlier versions, we'd click on this little downward arrow here. So now in the new version, that little arrow to spin up and down drives has been combined into the green kind of round ball thing. Okay, so that's a little UI tweak. Now let's have a look at what's under the hood. Now if we have a look here, we can see the Linux kernel that's being used is 5.3.6. And if we compare that to what was in the previous version, the previous version was running kernel 4.19.56. So we're on a much newer kernel. In fact, this kernel was only released on the 11th of October. So at present, it's the most up-to-date stable kernel available for Linux. Now let's quickly talk about kernel support in Unraid. And no, we're not talking about that bogus kernel, Kernel Sanders. We're talking Linux kernel with a K. Now get out of here. Now the stable versions of Unraid contain the long-term support kernels, which at present is the 4.19 kernel. But the RC versions of Unraid tend to have the latest stable kernel. So what's the difference between a long-term support kernel and a stable kernel? Okay, so long-term kernels basically just have long-term support. As these kernels are updated, it's only basically bug fixes that are put into the kernel. There's no new features. And if we see in Unraid, looking at the 6.7 stable series, 6.7.0 had kernel 4.19.41, and 6.7.2 has kernel 4.19.56. So the differences in these two kernels are basically just bug fixes. So in this new RC version, we have kernel 5.6.3. And if you look on the chart, it isn't a long-term release, as the next long-term release will be kernel 5.4. So this is a stable release, which is basically a released mainline kernel that's now considered stable. So this stable kernel will have a lot of features that are not available in the previous long-term kernels. Okay, so another change that we can see in 6.8 is when we look at the system information, we get a brief overview here, which is obviously where we'll see the Linux kernel version. But there's an extra button now where we can click onto more, which takes us through to a complete system overview of everything in the server. Now this reminds me a bit of Mac OS where you can click about this Mac to get a brief overview and then clicking on system report to get more information. Okay, so that's just a minor web UI tweak. So let's have a look at something more major. If we go to settings and SMB, you can see now we've got WS Discovery, which stands for Web Services Dynamic Discovery. So if you're running Windows, this is really good news. Because now, if we click onto network, we can see our Unraid servers. Now, actually, I've got three Unraid servers running at the moment, but only these two are on 6.8. My other one is currently on 6.7, so it doesn't show up here. But with WS Discovery, our servers will show up in Windows and we can browse all of the shares. So a really cool, useful feature. So whilst in the settings and on network services, if we go to the Apple AFP, we can see that this now has been deprecated. And in future versions of Unraid from 6.9 onwards, this service will be removed totally. 
Right, okay, you might have seen under network settings what I think is the most exciting thing in the new Unraid, and that's WireGuard support. So you can see here I've got a new icon called VPN Manager. Now by default you won't see this icon here, and if we go across onto my other server, you can see it's not here. And that's because, although the latest WireGuard module is included in the Unraid Linux kernel, we have to enable it by downloading a plugin. So to do that we just go to the Apps tab, and obviously search WireGuard, and install the excellent Dynamix WireGuard plugin. And after that's installed, going onto the Settings tab, the icon will appear here. Now in this video I'm not going to show how to set this up, but I will be releasing a video shortly which will show how to set up WireGuard. But once you've got WireGuard all set up, you'll find that it's a really great lightweight, modern and secure VPN. And it's really easy to set up a client to it. You can actually just take your phone, click on the I button here, and configure it using a QR code. Really, really simple. And then once it's set up on the phone, all you need to do is just switch on the WireGuard VPN you want by toggling the switch, and then the data will start flowing and you'll have access to your LAN. So at the moment, the WireGuard integration into Unraid is still very much work in progress, but I think us Unraiders, we're really lucky to have such a cutting edge feature so soon, and we can expect really good things from this moving forward. So, what else is new? Well, the array has got some improvements as well. The MD Unraid driver now has multi-stream support. So basically, reads on any drives that are not being written to will run at full speed. Parity sync should be faster, but actually it can also throttle back when there's other activity happening on the array. A parity sync will even pause should you format a disk and then resume afterwards and continue. So some very nice improvements there. Okay, and another really nice web UI improvement I think is if you click onto users and then choose a user, then the share permissions are available from within the user section. Really nice, I think. And also something else throughout Unraid is if you press F1 anywhere, it will toggle the help on and off. Okay, moving on again, let's go to settings. And now this time let's click on the VM manager and we can see now that the libvirt version is 5.7.0 and QMU has gone up to 4.1.0, so that's really nice. And also a VM improvement, well for AMD Vega cards anyway, is the Vega 10 reset bug patch is in this version of Unraid. So you guys who have had problems with Vega cards not resetting properly, well that's a thing of the past now. And recently there's been a patch release that fixes the Navi reset problem as well. So I posted on the forums and asked Tom about this and he said that's going to be added. So hopefully RC2 maybe. Right, back to settings and let's check what Docker version we're on. Okay, so now we're on version 19.03.3. And talking about Docker, an old bug with the container update state, that's been fixed. Okay, so that's the main things I can think about in this version. So let's talk about what's maybe not working. Okay, so there's a few drivers that have been omitted from this version. So if you have an Intel iXGBE, a Highpoint R750, or a Highpoint RR3740A, unfortunately, until the vendors update their code to work with kernel 5.3, then they're not going to be in Unraid. Now some people are reporting that the array is taking a bit longer than normal to start up. Now this is after the very first reboot after upgrading, and this is due to a change in how the icons are now handled for Docker. But on subsequent reboots, the array should start at normal speed. Now, if you're having problems with hard links and you're getting an error, well, there's a workaround for that. Just stop the array, go to Settings, Global Share Settings, and basically toggle the option for hard links to No, and then back on to Yes. Start the array, and you should be good to go. Okay, and the last thing, and it's really hardly worth mentioning, but if you open up a terminal window, and you type exit to close it, well, it doesn't close, it just comes straight back. But to be honest, I've never actually done that myself, I always just click on the cross. Okay, so that's everything I can think about that's new in the first RC version of Unraid 6.8.0. If there's anything you know that I've forgotten to put in, then please add it to the comments below. But now I'm going to wrap this up, and if you enjoyed this video, then please hit the like button, and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Now a big thank you to all of my awesome Patreons out there who support me. Thank you very much everyone, I really do appreciate it. And if you want to join that great bunch of people, then you can find links in the description.
Well, it's time for me to go now, but whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good and I'll catch you in the next video.